Hello, it's time for another video. Uh, it's going to be another Traveler Tale video. This one dealing with uh, my adventures in the city of Lyon. Lyon became my favorite place in France. It's a beautiful city, one of the larger places, located between where the Rhone and Seine rivers join. They don't join like this, though. They join like this. A long area where the rivers run parallel to each other with the city in the middle, and then they come together at the bottom. It's on the eastern side of the country, and uh, the city itself is kind of in three parts. The, the main part of the city is in between the rivers, and that looks much like Paris, very similar kind of architecture. What's most distinctive is that they also have a love of huge murals on the sides of buildings. Uh, many of them uh, being optical illusions that are quite effective. Others that are just down and out creative. There's one building where the whole side of it looks like a giant book rack, a uh, very eclectic one with all kinds of doodads and such in it. The modern city sprawls out on the eastern side. The western side has a, a little bit of a building down by the river and then a very steep hill. And towards the top of that hill is the Auberge Vieux Lyon, which was the hostel that I stayed at. And absolutely one of the best hostels I've been to anywhere in the world. Um, very nice rooms, but aside from that, it had a really good bar with a little restaurant and a patio that was on the side of this hill, which gave you spectacular views out over the entire city. If you look down, you could see a cathedral that dated to the time of Charlemagne, which had within it uh, a gigantic old medieval clock. Uh, on some of the streets, the old buildings that were on these streets at the, at the base of the hill had, instead of street signs, pictures conveying, like bas relief carved into the building of what was sold, like there was a cow on one, and that was where you went and bought meat. To get up to the hostel, you kind of had two options. One was an extremely steep road, which I didn't like, uh, where everything else is kind of built up. When you took this road up, there was a big area, can't really call it a park because it was too steep, you couldn't go there, but uh, a, a big steep area where there was no building whatsoever. And then finally at the top of that was, was where you reached the hostel. But I preferred to take, there was a funicular railroad. I love funicular railroads, partially because I love the word funicular. Uh, and you could take that up. It went above the hostel. There are a couple of big old churches and a kind of tiny version of the Eiffel Tower, as well as some Roman ruins, because uh, this was a Roman city originally, um, Roman amphitheater up there. And then you'd walk down to the hostel. So as I, I stayed there for quite a while, met a lot of really interesting people, a lot of fun people. Uh, there was one day that was spectacular. Um, me and a couple of other people, including two who are going to pop up in some other stories I'm going to tell about it, Alicia from Australia and Karine from Sweden, uh, and, and a couple of others, we went down that morning and we went shopping and we bought a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables and chocolate and cheese. And the women had fondue pots. So we went back up, chopped up all of the fruit and veggies, melted the chocolate in one fondue pot and the cheese in another. And we set this all up on some big tables out on the patio. And anyone was free to join. The cost was a bottle of wine. And so there were a number of people who we knew at the hospital already. And of course, they all joined in. And a whole bunch of newcomers, people who just arrived that day, saw this was going on. And it's like, come on, bring a bottle of wine. Have, have at it. And we spent a beautiful summer afternoon getting to know new people, hanging out with people from around the world, drinking wine, eating fondue, cheese, veggies and cheese, and, and fruit and chocolate. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, Alicia and Karine were both there on work visas. 
So they were going to be staying in Leo for quite a while. And they decided to rent an apartment together. Uh, both of them spoke French. Elisa's French was good, but not quite as good as it might have needed to be for the situations that she found herself in. Alicia was wonderful, very entertaining, uh, heart as big as the world, but she was the kind of person who gets flustered very easily and flustered in a big way, which can't help but make you be amused. And boy, did she get flustered in Leo. At one point, Karine made arrangements to meet this guy who was going to take them to an apartment and show them an apartment that they might want to rent. But <clears throat> Karine got called into work that day. So Alicia had to go and meet this guy instead. She'd never met him. She, he didn't know who he was going to be meeting. He was expecting to meet Swedish Karine. And Alicia's a curly redhead. Karine had long blonde hair. So uh, Alicia was looking for, they went to the main square where they were going to meet, and she's looking, trying to find a guy who might be looking for someone other than her. And so she spotted a man who kind of was looking at her quizzically, looking around and, and standing there for a long period of time. So Alicia figured, well, this is a pretty safe bet. It's probably him. So she walks up to this man and says in French, are you looking for a young, blonde Swedish girl? Well, she couldn't make it, but I'm here instead. Uh, the guy seemed quite pleased with this, and so Alicia suggested that they go to see the apartment, go to see his apartment. Um, he was also very pleased with this idea and started talking about money. Um, Alicia was wondering the shot that this has been settled with, with Karine already and that the rent had, had been worked out. And then he pulled out his wallet and was pulling out Euro and trying to give them to Alicia. And only at that point did she realize that he thought she was a prostitute who had just approached him on the street and was trying to lure him back to his own apartment so that they could have sex mm -hmm. at which point she became incredibly flustered and ran off and ran back to the hostel to tell us all this story i think she wanted sympathy but it, you know we had just all thought it was absolutely hilarious i still think it's hilarious poor alicia she did get herself into quandaries she um started dating one of the guys who worked at the hostel manu emmanuel and they were getting along very well, so Manu decided to invite her home to meet his family. He lived with his parents and his brother and uh, elderly grandmother. So Alicia came over for dinner, and things were going well. They had their dinner, and afterwards, the grandmother started to tell Alicia a story. And Alicia had a very difficult time understanding the grandmother. For reasons known only to her, she made the random guess that the grandmother must be telling her a funny story. So when it seemed like the story was over, in Alicia's own words, she burst out laughing, clapping her hands and rolling back with laughter, hoping to win them all with the wonderful affection that she was showing, and realized almost immediately that this was a wrong thing to have done because the family were just shocked and horrified. Remember I talked about that steep steep hill, the incline, when you were going up to the hostel and there, there were no buildings there? Well, there used to be buildings there. It used to all be housing all along this hill. And uh, at the turn of the century, there was a terrible, terrible storm. And a landslide took place, and it wiped out all of those buildings. They went crashing down. And it was never rebuilt because, for one thing, so many people died, and it was just, well, we're not going to build anything else there. So the grandmother had told this story of how she was in this storm. She was one of the survivors, one of the few survivors, because, you see, her parents, her entire family, 
lived there and they all died except for her. And that was the story that Alicia randomly guessed must be a funny story. So as the grandmother finished relating it, Alicia laughed and clapped her hands and convinced poor Manu's family that she was some very sick, demented Australian. Manu was actually forbidden by his family to continue seeing her. So they had to carry on their relationship on the sly. And once again, Alicia came back to the hostel fully willing to tell us this incredibly humiliating story about herself. She probably didn't ever think that one day one of the people she was talking to was going to tell a potentially infinite number of other people these humiliating stories on the internet, but hey, that just happened. Like, share, subscribe, comment, send money, send flowers, send chocolates, do whatever. Have a good one.